everyone! Welcome to today's video on congruent figures and sequences of rigid transformations. So the key concept for this um, topic, which is within our general transformations unit, is that congruent figures have the same shape and size of each other. Same shape, same size. And we can prove that if two figures are congruent if and only if there exists a sequence of rigid transformations or rigid motions that map one figure onto another. Okay, so if I am given two figures and I'm asked, are these two figures congruent? I can say, yes, they are because there exists this sequence of rigid transformations, which include translations, rotations, and reflections that will map my original figure onto the other figure. If such, such a sequence exists, then we know those two shapes are congruent. The figures are congruent. But if, they, if a mapping does not exist, then we can say for sure those are not congruent shapes. Okay, um, and then one other vocabulary point is that on congruent figures, we have corresponding points. So corresponding points on congruent figures are points that map onto each other when a sequence of, per of transformations is occurred or performed. So less technically, they are points that match up or go with each other. Okay, so let's look at this example over here to the right. I have rectangle ABCD and rectangle EFGH. Okay, these two rectangles are congruent. We notice that these congruent figures have the same shape and size as congruent figures do. But we can really prove they're congruent by saying that there is a sequence of transformations that will take me from rectangle ABCD to rectangle EFGH. Okay, it looks like my sequence of transformations there would be first I would translate up five, and then I would translate right seven, and thus there's a sequence of transformations that maps the original shape to the other shape. Thus, we can conclude that these are congruent. And we'll notice that we have then four pairs of corresponding points. So corresponding points are points that map onto each other. So in this situation, we took B and then we ended up at F. When we were learning translations and other transformations originally, instead of calling that F, we would probably call that B prime, right? Which indicated it's the image of B, which is still a great name, but it doesn't, we don't necessarily need to label it as B prime. Um, in this context when they're asking us are these congruent. So here we would say that B and F are corresponding points. They map onto each other when we perform the sequence of transformations and they, they go with each other, they match onto each other. The order of corresponding points in the name of each figure must be the same. So like here they're calling this quadrilateral ABCD and quadrilateral EFGH. So that means then that A and E are supposed to be corresponding points. Those correspond with each other, right? D and H correspond with each other. We'd have to keep those in the same position within the name. Okay, and we can also say, we don't just use points, you can also say that figures course are corresponding. So these two rectangles correspond with each other. Um, you can say side lengths. So like AD corresponds with line segment EH. Those are corresponding side lengths. Um, and then there's also corresponding angles, which will be pretty important in the long run for you in geometry. Okay, but that's the idea of corresponding points and all congruent figures have those corresponding points. And for all congruent figures, there exists a sequence of rigid transformations that maps one figure onto the other. All right, so let's see it in action. First, um, this is a little bit more generic, but it's trying to get at the understanding. What does it mean if shapes are congruent? So this question is a rectangle with an area of 25 square centimeters is rotated and reflected in the coordinate plane. What will be the area of the resulting image? Explain. Now you might see this and like worry. So you're like, why are we talking about area? We haven't been talking about area. That's true. But all we're told, right, we have some rectangle, 25 centimeters squared. That's the area of the rectangle. We're going to take that rectangle and we're going to rotate it and then we're going to reflect it, right? We don't know exactly the direction. They don't tell us that. They don't tell us because it doesn't matter. Because what are we doing here? We are having an original figure. We have our starting figure. And then we are applying 
a sequence of transformations. We're rotating and we're reflecting. So we're applying a sequence of rigid transformations. And when we take a figure, apply a sequence of rigid transformations, and get a new figure, then our definition of congruence says we know those two figures are congruent, right? They are congruent if and only if there exists a sequence of rigid transformations that maps one onto the other. Okay, and congruent shapes, those have the same size and the same shape. If they're the same size, right, that means they have the same area. They're the same shape, it's just been moved around. Okay, so our new um, resulting image will have an area of 25 centimeters squared as well because it will be congruent with the original figure. And we know that congruent figures have the same size, thus the same area. All right, now let's try to identify congruent, congruent figures. So we have this uh, graph here. We have triangles ABC, triangle DEF, and triangle GHI. And we're asked in this problem, is triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF? Explain. So triangle ABC, that's my one figure, and my other figure is triangle DEF. And we need to say, are those congruent? Okay, well, first let me look at them. If I look at them, they appear to have the same angles and the same side lengths. They appear to be the same size and the same shape. To justify or to like prove that two shapes are congruent, we need to say that there exists a sequence of transformations that will take one to the other. That's our definition. It's the way we prove that shapes are congruent. Okay, so we have to come up with a sequence of transformations that will take us from triangle ABC to triangle DEF. All right, so if I look at this, I'm gonna to try to ignore, right, we wanna ignore this one. Don't let that get in our way. I'm gonna ask, are my shapes currently facing the same direction? No, so it can't just be translations. Are they currently facing opposite directions? Like are they or orientated like they're looking at each other? Yes, actually, they appear to be mirror images or reflections of each other. Based on the way this question is asked, if these figures are congruent, C and F are corresponding points. So that means after I do my whole transformation, C and F would be on the same spot. All right, so I think then if I focus in here, C and F are currently lined up. Okay, so that's helpful. And then, yeah, once I've drawn it this way, I can kind of imagine if I reflect over this line, I'm gonna be lined up, lined up with triangle DEF. Okay, so that would be the first thing. So this is the line X equals five. This is a vertical line that intersects the X axis at five. Every point along that line has an X coordinate of five. So then I can very briefly reflect across this line. Okay, the point of this video is not to explain how do we reflect. If that's something we have forgotten, then you should go back to the reflections video that I made. Um, but here I can say, okay, there we go. I've reflected across my line and I'm looking pretty good. What do I need to do now to get that shape to triangle DEF? Well, it looks like I can go up one, two, three, four, five. All right, that will work. That point is gonna get mapped where it needs to go. Let's see if I can do that same thing for my bottom right one. Up one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. And then C to F, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Okay, so it looks like, like we thought from the beginning, these shapes are congruent. So we would say, yes, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now let's prove it because the sequence of transformations reflecting across the line x equals five and translating up five units maps triangle ABC to triangle, to triangle DEF. Since that sequence of rigid transformations exists, then we can conclude that those triangles are congruent. As long as there exists any one singular sequence of transformations that will take my triangle ABC to triangle DEF, then I know that my shapes are congruent. 
All right, now let's look at a non-example. So in this question, we're asked, is triangle ABC congruent to triangle GHI? Explain. Triangle ABC is right here, and then triangle GHI is right here. Just looking at this, I can tell that these don't seem to be the exact same shape. This triangle GHI looks like longer than triangle ABC. Um, I can see that BC, from how these triangles are named, tri BC and HI, those are supposed to correspond with each other. Um, this line segment BC, that's three units, but the line segment here, HI, that's four units. So we can already tell they're not the same size, okay? Um, but what we really need to do for my writing, for my description, is explaining, no, triangle ABC is not congruent, congruent to triangle GHI because there does not exist a sequence of transformations that maps one to the other. I didn't actually like show you how to try to perform a sequence of transformations here. Right, I just concluded that it's not possible because I see they're not the same size. I try to do a sequence of transformations and see that it won't work. We would have this triangle, which is close, but it is not the same triangle. It doesn't perfectly map onto triangle GHI. Um, thus, again, there is not a sequence of transformations that's going to take us from one shape to the other. So we know it's not congruent, which means it's not the same size, not the same shape. All right, great job, everyone.